Welcome back to the channel, folks. My name is Brad, and in today's video, I'd like to talk about front-end loaders on tractors. Due to the pandemic, there's been a mass exodus of people out of the city into the country that's kept tractor dealers very busy. It's really hard to find a subcompact, or in this case, a compact tractor for sale. But when you get a tractor, you don't necessarily know everything about it and you have to learn that. So I'm going to go over front end loaders and the use of front end loaders and hopefully that'll help out those people out there that are new to tractors. So the front end loader is this portion of the tractor and in this case it's removable. All Kubota tractors that I know of have removable front end loaders whether they have a clip mechanism or they have a pin like I have. But we can remove the loader on this L3901 in about a minute and we can probably put it back on in about a minute assuming that we take it off on level ground. But the loader consists of where it attaches to the frame of the tractor, which is there in this case. And you'll see that this is similar across all the brands, just a whole host of other tractors out there that have front end loaders that are removable. And all these parts that I'm gonna talk about are gonna be the same across most brands. So then you have a cylinder on each side and this cylinder right here lifts the tractor boom or frame up or the front end loader frame up. That's what this cylinder does. So on your controls of your tractor, you'll be able to extend that cylinder or retract that cylinder. And if you extend this cylinder, it's gonna lift this up. And if you retract it, it's gonna push it down. Now it has limits on those travels. The limit will be how long the cylinder is. And on the back side, the limit will be when the cylinder is fully retracted, or in some cases, when this hits the ground, if your tractor doesn't have strong enough hydraulics to lift up your tractor. Most tractors do have strong enough hydraulics to lift themselves up but if it doesn't, that would be the stop on the bottom end rather than the travel of the cylinder. And then on the front, it depends on what kind of tractor you have, and I'll stick to Kubota's because I know that better. But on the BX series, you might have one cylinder on the front that controls your bucket and your bucket's going to dump and it's gonna curl, curl back towards you and dump away from you. And it's either gonna do that with a single cylinder here in the front or in the case of the L series and many tractors out there, I think from the B series on up with Kubota, you're gonna to start to see two hydraulic cylinders and they're right here. And again, it's the same concept. You're gonna apply some hydraulic pressure to this side of a ram inside that cylinder. It's gonna extend that ram out and that's going to lengthen that cylinder or it's going to shorten that cylinder. And that's all hydraulics is about, is lengthening a piston inside of a cylinder and then retracting it by applying hydraulic pressure on either side of that. That's why you have hoses that go to either side of the cylinder. You can see them better on this side, but there's a fitting right here and there's a fitting right here. And that just puts oil to different sides of that cylinder or that ram in this case. So that covers the basics of the loader and the hydraulics. Now I don't have a third function on my tractor. A third function would allow you to have a place up here to hook up hydraulics to manipulate some cylinder that would be forward, like up here, like a grapple. There are buckets that are clamshell buckets that come apart. There's just a lot of things that you can run with hydraulics forward of the front end loader, but I don't have that third function. If you do buy a new tractor, I highly recommend you get that third function put on when you buy it, because it's a lot cheaper to get done then than it is afterwards. And then the last part of the loader is the bucket. Now this is a quick attach bucket. So I have two handles right here that allow me to quickly detach this bucket from the frame of the loader and then put on say a set of pallet forks or a grapple. Now I do have a set of Land Pride pallet forks that I use a lot on here, but I mainly use my bucket. Now there is another version of the bucket that is the pin on bucket. And rather than disconnecting right here, it is pinned on directly to the bucket and the only way you can take it off is by removing those pins. But you're finding more and more that people are buying quick attach buckets and quick attach loaders. So let's work on that term real quick. So this is a, a removable or quick attach loader because it removes itself or it can be removed from the tractor. And now here on the end, it's more commonly referred to as a quick attach bucket. Be sure when you're buying a tractor or you're looking at a used tractor when they say they have a quick attach loader that they're talking about that they have a quick attach bucket. This is very important out here because if you don't have one when you buy it, it's very expensive to retrofit it to a quick attach. So that pretty much covers kind of the functional parts of a front end loader. While I'm out here on the very front end of the tractor, this is a quick attach bucket. So it comes off as we referred to. And because I don't have the third function to put some sort of grapple device on top of this bucket, I do find that I'm using this bucket and things that I put in this bucket want to fall out. So I installed or I had welded on these three hooks on the top. Now I'll come in closer so you can see them and the way that they're welded. They're buttressed in with some extra steel on the corners. And then this one 
this center hook is just welded directly to the bucket because there's some reinforced steel here from Kubota. If you get a tractor with a front end loader, the, one of the first things I recommend you do is have hooks put on your bucket. Now they have bolt-on hooks. I don't recommend bolt-on hooks because they're not as strong as welded hooks, but a bolt-on hook is better than no hook at all. Put three hooks across the front here, and some people even put a clevis inside of their bucket, and I can see where that would come in handy too. That would help you strap things in as well, or maybe strap on some clamp-on forks. I use these all the time. I can use them to secure a load with a chain inside of the bucket, or I can use them to pull up fence posts or carry around logs. I find that I use these hooks all the time and it keeps me from having to switch over to my pallet forks a lot. Now pallet forks are very useful, especially if you're using pallets, but a lot of times your bucket is what's gonna be on your tractor the most. And with having these hooks on here, I can use the bucket more often than swapping back and forth with the fork. We'll go over the loader controls real quick. So the loader control is basically a T pattern. Imagine a small T, lowercase T. And if you come up on the control, that's gonna take your boom and push it down. And if you come down on the control, it's gonna lift your boom up. So the boom is actually the main large part of your loader. And then left or right are your bucket functions. If you push it away from you, it's going to dump or tilt your bucket away from you. And if you pull it towards you, it's gonna curl your bucket towards you. There's also another setting or another position on this control and that is to take it and sharply push it forward, and that's what's called your float position, and that just basically doesn't put any hydraulic pressure on either side of that cylinder, and just allows your bucket or whatever you have on the front to just drag, and that's good sometimes for back dragging. I personally don't use float at all, but some people find they can back drag better with that. It just takes the weight of the loader, puts it down, and doesn't put any downward pressure or upward pressure, and the bucket just follows the contour of the land as you back up and leaves a smooth finish. So it's very simple. Those are the functions of, of a loader and that's gonna be across the board of all loaders. It's not like they're in different configurations. Those four motions are what make loaders work and those cylinders work on the loader. Now the position of the loader control, in this case on a Kubota L-Series, this stays right here. If the loader comes off, this stays here. You disconnect the hydraulic lines and it's always gonna be here. Um, there may be some loaders where it comes off with, the controls come off with the loader. But also I'm starting to see a trend, and I see this on the B and the BX series, but I think also on the L3902, the loader control is here. So instead of, you know, lifting your arm up, it's your right arm, lifting your arm up to use the loader control, it's more down here keeping your arm bent. Now, I've never used a loader like that. I don't know if that's more convenient or less convenient. This is what I'm used to, and this works for me but uh, there must be a reason why they're going to putting them on the fender. And, and I'm guessing it's because it's easier to use or that's what most users prefer. Okay, to demonstrate that, I'm gonna push down on the lever and that's going to make the boom come up. And you can see what it's doing to the hydraulic cylinder there. It is lengthening that hydraulic cylinder and it'll go all the way up till it stops. You can't damage it by hitting the stop. So that's all the way up and then you take the lever and push it away from you. It retracts that cylinder. And it goes all the way down. And now if I want to do the float function, I just do that. And now what that's done is that it's relieved any hydraulic pressure off the front. And when I go backwards, it'll just drag the weight of the loader to make the ground even as the bucket is dragged across it. And then the next function, again, the T function, is push it to the right or away from you. That's going to dump your bucket towards you. It's going to curl your bucket. When I shut off the tractor, I left these hydraulic cylinders in their fully extended position to show you something. There's a lot of debate out there of whether you should operate your loader like this. And you can see that this inner piston's at its full extension, it's at its full stop. And what that means is that I don't know how much of this piston is left in here, but maybe there's that much left in here. Back here, you just have hydraulic fluid and all of your leverage is gonna be in this area right here. That's the only thing keeping that from flopping. So you'll hear a lot of debate out there of don't ever operate your loader in this position. And, and I would definitely support that. But I will say there are times when you want to push and you just have to be careful and you have to use your own judgment. But I pushed a lot of things with the loader in this position by using the front end of this bucket. Like let's say I have a pile of dirt and I wanna just kind of feather it and grade it out going forward. If I know there's no stumps or no rock, big, huge rocks or anything that's gonna put undue pressure, then I will do that. I will leave the cylinders in this position and I will front grade or forward grade. 
if I'm ever going to push anything real heavy or I'm going to dig out something like a stump, I'm going to retract this at least halfway, if not put it all the way in. And that way I have a much stronger cylinder. Cylinders are going to be very expensive to reseal. If you bend this, you're probably going to have to at least replace the piston, if not the whole cylinder. I've never bought one. I can't imagine it's cheap. I'm going to throw a number out there. It's probably $1,000. Pretty much anything with a tractor when you go to fix it is $1,000. If you decide to grade like this or use the loader in this position, Position, be very careful and don't put undue stress in it. I think it can handle a lot more than most people think it can handle, but at the same time, is it worth it? There's other ways maybe to get the job done than to jeopardize your loaders. So while I got the tractor in this position, you'll see the back of my bucket doesn't have any paint on it. And that's because I do a lot of what's called back blading. Now we talked about how the cylinders in its extreme extended position, that gives you almost a 90 degree edge right here to pull material back, not just push it forward like we talked to before. And this is a very aggressive way to reclaim dirt or to knock down a pile. And again, you can do it, but don't be over aggressive or else you may harm your tractor. A better way to do that is to take this bucket and curl it into your cylinders fully retracted and then use this back edge of your bucket to pull that dirt back. And I'll demonstrate this on a pile of dirt here in a minute, but you could using this edge of the bucket and the cylinder fully retracted is a better way to pull that dirt back and will most likely protect your tractor better than the way it's set up right here. But imagine if I retracted this cylinder a little bit, it would change the angle. So I've changed the angle of the bucket and now it's more of a 45 instead of that straight up and down 90 degree. My cylinder is about halfway retracted, so I'm protecting my cylinder a little bit here. And this is the way I probably do most of my back blading, is once I've knocked it down, either with that 90 degree edge with the cylinder fully ex extended, or if I use the back of my bucket by curling the bucket all the way, once I get whatever I'm trying to grade knocked down kind of halfway smooth, then I'll use this angle to back blade and get it smoother. And with, and with this angle and this configuration, you can actually lift the front tires of the tractor off the ground and put more weight and downward pressure so you get a nice, smooth, clean back blading grade. Now, a lot of people will say you're abusing your tractor if you lift the front tires off the ground. That's not true at all. These tractors are very, very tough. They're built to do that. They wouldn't give you that much power in the hydraulics if they thought that lifting the front tires off the ground was a bad thing. Now, everything can be done to an extreme. There's a lot of ways you probably can get into a lot of trouble by lifting your front tires off the ground when you're grading, but you've just got to do a risk assessment. And if you think that in order to get the job done, the best way to do it is lift your tires off the ground a little bit to get a little bit more weight on this cutting edge, then do it. But don't do it to the extreme or do it 14 hours a day to where you're putting your tractor at risk of damaging it. Now, another thing you can do with your tractor with the hydraulics and with this L-Series tractor, it's got plenty of power to just use the tilt and curl function of the bucket to lift the front tires off the ground. But this is a real quick way to address a flat tire out in the field if you don't have a jack with you. And it's perfectly safe and perfectly okay to do this. Okay, so now let's put some of these ideas or principles into practice doing what loaders are generally designed for, which is moving dirt. I just set this loader on the ground and use my eye to establish kind of this parallel to the ground configuration of the bucket to go into the pile. Basically, you want the bottom of the bucket to match the ground grade. And a very easy way to do it, if you don't have one of those bucket indicators on your tractor, which is a rod that kind of falls into a little detent to tell you when your bucket is perfectly level, is the top side of at least Kubota buckets has this very wide three or four inch piece of steel. And you can see that from the seat of the tractor. So if you look at that piece of steel and it looks fairly level, you know that the bottom of your bucket is fairly level with the grade. As you go into the pile, you'll feel if maybe you're too low and you're digging because you'll start feeling resistance away from the pile before you get into the pile. And if you've got your bucket angle less aggressive, kind of like my hand is here, rather than going in the pile like this, if you're like that, you'll actually feel the bucket ride up on the dirt. And you'll know that you need to back up a little bit and reset your bucket. So once you've established that your bucket is at the right grade and you go into a pile of dirt or a pile of fill or a pile of gravel, like in this case, this is very tightly packed clay. So I'm not gonna be able to just go in and push all that dirt all the way to the back of the bucket and fill it. I'm gonna have to go in and just kind of grab a couple inches and then 
curl the bucket towards me as I work into the pile. But generally you can push in and you'll feel the tractor stop going forward. You'll lift up on your bucket and curl it to towards you a little bit. And that'll allow the bucket to take a bite at a different angle of the pile. And as it takes that different bite at a different angle, it'll start filling up the bucket more and more with dirt. And as you go into the pile and you raise your bucket and reduce that aggressive angle, you'll end up towards the top of the pile with a full bucket of dirt. Now, sometimes it's over full. And what I'll do is at the top, I'll back out a little bit and I'll pop the bucket so that it kind of comes down a little bit and it'll settle that dirt inside the bucket. See in this, demonstration i'm going to have my bucket at kind of that 90 degree angle with my cylinder extended and what i'm going to demonstrate is let's say you've got some let's say this is gravel and there's some loose gravel here you want to push into the pile i'm going to use the front end of that bucket to push a little bit of dirt here and as i go into the pile curl the bucket and that way i'll clean up around the edges and also get a full bucket Okay, so after I got that last scoop of dirt, I dumped it right here and I showed the full 90 degree extension of the bucket, knocking the top off the hill, knocking that dirt down a little bit. Then I curled my bucket all the way towards me and used the very back edge of the bucket to spread the dirt out. Then I went in a 45 degree angle on the bucket and lifted the tires of the tractor off the ground and kind of pushed the dirt down and spread it in. And then my final grade, was taking the bucket and basically laying it flat with just a little bit of downward pressure, a little bit of weight of the tractor. I didn't have the tires off the ground to kind of make it smooth. And that's the way I grade. I grade like that with my front end loader and I get really, really good results. We've got 800 feet of driveway, of gravel driveway coming into Piney Grove. And also we do a lot of grading around our buildings. We've graded around our mega shed, our pole barn, our new house build, and we're gonna be having another house build come up here shortly. And a lot of that work is gonna get done with this tractor and this front end loader doing those methods right there. Thanks for watching today's video. If you liked it, please click that like button below. Also comment down below, we'd love to hear from you. But otherwise that's all I've got. We'll catch you on the next one. Take care out there y'all.